Industries that are hot, sectors set to outperform the market. That's what's here in Zach's industry rank analysis. We're going to get the latest on this now from that popular industry indexer, that market maven, and we've got a couple of other names that we call them, but we won't get into that right now. Charles Roqueblatt from Zax.com. Not sure if I'm going to be able to live up to that reputation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised the, you didn't pull out the uh, grand poobah. You mean about the other names that we call them? <laughs> <laughs> You've got something interesting on your uh, radar this week. It's not all new as far as the news is concerned, um, but maybe the part of it that you're focusing on is, and that's natural gas is what you're looking at. And, of course, everybody is, you know, like popping the champagne corks because everybody's expecting those who use natural gas to heat their homes anyway during the wintertime, expecting lower gas bills because of a lower pricing cost for natural gas. On the stock investing side, though, you see another problem because of that. Yeah, and there's really two issues. Like you said, everyone, everyone who uses natural gas or propane, uh, Hank Hill included, mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're, they're going to be cheering because their heating bills will be lower. And it's interesting because they're making that prediction at the same time the Farmer's Almanac says, and I'll quote here, a winter during which temperatures will average below normal for about three quarters of the nation. Right. Uh, I and, think that's code for chilly. And it's already <laughs> getting cold in Chicago anyway. It is. We well, are. well, we really didn't have a summer. But, and so that's good for your home heating bill. But when you look at what's going on in your stock portfolio, it may not be so good. Because what's happening is that we're seeing the number of rigs increase. We're seeing inventories at record high. Right. Um, and actually, natural gas inventories are projected to increase. And as a result, when we look at 2009, we're actually seeing profit forecasts being cut on several exploration and production companies, such as Bill Barrett, such as Apache, such as EOG Resources. So mm -hmm. some of these analysts that are following these companies are going, uh, I don't know about these gas inventories. My projections might be a little bit too high. Yeah, so it's a pure supply-demand situation. You've got robust production from onshore fields and weak U.S. demand. Total consumption, though, for this year expected to be down 2%. That's interesting to me also. Well, we do. We have less people working, less you know, factories and businesses operating, real, uh, commercial real estate's in a deep funk. But you also have a lot of people sitting at home realizing, you know what, it's really nice and cozy to have a thermostat 75 but mm -hmm. I can put on a sweatshirt, put it at 72 and chop off $10 or $20 a, a month off my electricity bill. Right. And if you're someone who's trying to be frugal and just watch your paycheck, well, you know, that's a no-brainer. You know, grab your, grab, your sweat, grab your sweatshirt or I should say perhaps your Snuggie <laughs> um, and turn on your thermostat. Right, and there's weak demand in the industrial sector as well. So is this going to be a problem for these natural gas stocks uh, into next year as well? I mean, maybe for the foreseeable future here? You know, it's interesting because when you look at 2010, we are seeing some analysts raise their forecasts, but I'm seeing some analysts actually make cuts. So there's a, pretty, there's a real tug of war going on right now with 2010. 2009, definitely seeing the earnings estimates being cut, seeing more cuts than positive revisions. There still are some analysts raising the revisions, so it's not all negative. But when you look at 2010, a lot of disagreement over analysts. And I think where that really comes from is how the year is going to look like. Everyone's expecting recovery to really kind of take hold in 2010 and it kind of accelerate a little bit. But the question is, are we going to see 1.5% one, one growth? Or are we going to see 2.5%, 3% growth? And that difference may not sound much, like much, but it has a big impact on how much natural gas, how much oil we're going to use. And I think for analysts, they're trying to figure out what number to peg because when you're looking at that far, particularly the second half of 2010, you, gotta, you actually have to figure out not only what are natural gas prices are going to be, but then what are, the companies going to, what are companies going to do in reaction to those prices? Are they going to increase production? Are they going to send their cash flows? And so for analysts, it's, it's a really hard thing to predict. And even for economists right now, it's difficult to predict what growth is going to be like. But when you're looking at natural gas, um, it's really problematic. And I think the other thing over the very short term, I'm not a currency trader, but I'm looking at the dollar just really being beat to death. Mm -hmm. um, and at some point, I think we might actually have a short-term snapback simply because there's been so much selling pressure on the dollar. Uh, if that were to occur, I think we would see a pullback in several commodities, not just natural gas, which has rebounded lately. It's about 
over $5 as we taped this this morning, October 7. But it could affect oil. Again, that would weigh on those E&P companies. I think you're also looking at gold and other things, which wouldn't necessarily affect the E&P companies, but I think there would be an effect across the commodity sector if we did have a short-term dollar rebound. You know, I'm noticing, too, uh, and I find interesting, that uh, optimism over an economic, a U.S. economic recovery, boosting oil prices on the commodities market now that you bring up commodities, it's not doing that same favor, though, for these natural gas prices. What's different? What's the different dynamic at play there? Well, I think they're looking at a lot at natural gas inventories, but we actually have seen natural gas prices rebound. Um, and because everyone's looking about just how much they're down on a year-over-year -year basis. If we go back to January, natural gas is trending over six dollars. Um, it recently got above five dollars but a lot of people are looking at those inventories and natural gas it's at r inventories are at record level and are expected to continue to climb over the next several weeks. So what you're seeing in natural gas that you're not seeing in oil is a really huge supply problem uh, that we don't have right now in oil. Not to say that oil inventories can be brought down some but natural gas pr inventories are definitely far above where they should be for this time of year and given our current strength of the economy. All right, you can read all about it, as they say, in this week's Industry Rank Analysis, as penned by Mr. Roteblatt. You can link to it off of our homepage at zax.com. With Charles Roteblatt, I'm Terry Ruffalo.